hello viewers welcome to chat with chitra season 2 namaste um namaste. Today we have a new guest um on this episode of chat with chitra she is a music educator a specialist with nearly 40 years of teaching experience imparting carnatic vocal music be it classical devotional or sanskrit shlokas and bhajans she is a very established and a professional singer and uh, having learned from renowned gurus of uh, carnatic music i'm really delighted to welcome my guest today namaskaram shrimati chitra nagraj how are you welcome to chat with chitra season 2 thank you it's a pleasure to have you here thank you for joining in how are you today i am fine it's a pleasure for me also for interacting with you and all your other audience lovely i'm eager to know about your growing up years did you have music in your family where your parents musicians how did it all start actually my parents are not musicians my father was very interested in music i am from delhi born and brought up in <clears throat> delhi they had kept a music tutor for my sister and my cousin sister and the master used to come at 5 am in the morning in the winter cold delhi mm. winter mm. and i was 5 years and uh, i used to listen to them you know like while sleeping and after some years my parents said is that i am singing without learning and my sister is not learning so they stopped the master and i started singing from the age of 5 or 6 like himagiri taniye what my sister learned i used to sing and in everybody's house for guru and other occasions you know so mm. they realized that you know i have got potential to learn music so i started learning uh, from um, you must have heard about andavan pichai the great uh, composer who has been blessed by lord murugan so her daughter kamakshi kupuswami was my first teacher mm. then mm. after she moved to chennai i started learning from mr shankar sharma nambudri who was disciple of alatu brothers mm. at that time i got selected in delhi all india radio and i started singing then after marriage i had to shift base to hyderabad mm. then i learned from simati janashni santanam then afterwards mr emman subramanyam and so many other gurus wherever i used to get some knowledge which is never ending till you are alive there is no end for knowledge i went on learning and i'm still a learner only fantastic so inspiring i think nammalodra solluva illaya kelvi gnanam and the kelvi gnanam i think started from a very young age Uh, with you isn't it you yeah <laughs> you can have a multi bilingual tamil and pesla english and pesla so that's the reason i started with this yeah yeah i, I studied in a tamil school in delhi so ilakkana ilakke tamil also i am proficient that's why i'm able to sing this tirupugal and other things without faltering you know Absolutely. so i feel language is very important for music if you more languages you know it helps you more actually certainly and it's so nice to hear from uh, you know uh, an established musician such as yourself you're right the the diction in all these uh, you know tirupugal and uh, pasuram and thevaram they are they are really very profound and if you start mispronouncing or misspelling it in your uh, yeah. in, while singing it does make a huge difference isn't it i mean for people who know the difference if you understand and sing the outcome is always better sure. and uh, having moved to hyderabad i learned telugu and it became a second mother tongue for me and i always feel blessed you know when i sing tyagaraja anamacharya vadrachara ramadas or shama shastri smritis that i have been blessed by the lord to know this language because i'm able to understand tell the meaning to my students and sing it better you know with more bhava hmm makes sense isn't it yeah and uh, so when did you start your uh, giving concerts what i is? started giving small concerts in delhi itself but since an early marriage i came to hyderabad i started singing with my guru simati janakshmi santana then uh, i started singing started my classes in 1982 and uh, used to sing in lot of you know like temple concerts for navaratri and various small festivals since family was my priority i didn't go much out of station to give concerts so never came into the big limelight but i was sponsored by the government of andhra pradesh to represent the state for various festivals so few i have attended and have given concerts 
Fantastic. Yeah, I think not many know about this, don't they? I was a member of Film Censor Board for 20 years. So being knowing Telugu and Tamil, I used to see the Tamil movies which are dubbed from Telugu mm. to see the language part. And that also gave me a lot of experience, actually. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Uh -huh. so you have balanced both. Did you have a chance to sing uh, in the uh, Telugu playback or were you invited? No, no, I'm always a classical singer, but I never ventured for playback singing. And my voice, I think it won't suit also playback singing. Right. So only suitable classical and devotional music. Right. Okay. And when, when did this fascination for learning shlokas actually start in your uh, life journey? Now, what happened was when I started teaching, I really <laughs> just sit in Sarigama, basic lessons, the children might lose interest. So it started as a venture, you know, so I started teaching sloka side by side parallelly. Like the first class, I'll teach two lines from Suprabhatam, then one lesson of from the Sarli Varshe. Like that, over a period of three, four months, the children or the adults, they used to finish Suprabhatam, then I'll teach a small bhajan. So that within one or two months, they have some verses to sing and show. Instead yeah. of just sitting with this, I thought the interest will be sustained. So I have been doing it all through my life and to this day also I'm doing it. And I feel, I mean, thankful to the Supreme that I taught Supravadam to almost 3,500 students so far. And all of them can recite it without seeing, you know. Okay. So I think I've been blessed by the Supreme to do this service. Amazing, isn't it? It's very important to inculcate this habit in youngster, young people, and which is what you have done. So that's an amazing achievement. Now also I teach them, you know, like within few classes, it's two mm -hmm. nine budget for young mm -hmm. students a heavier bhajan for the elders or some tirpugar, something I keep teaching parallelly, mm. two things I teach parallelly so that their interest is sustained to mm. sing something. Yeah, sometimes it becomes very monotonous, right? So if you start having uh, teaching them small, smaller songs or bhajans, so that will maintain their interest in learning and pursuing further. Fantastic, yes. Sustained interest in Carnatic music, only few of them come up to that level. Yeah. So Till whenever they learn, if they learn these things, something they have to sing, no? So that is my motto, actually. Very true. The times you learned from your gurus and you yourself imparting Carnatic music to other people, do you see a difference at all? I see a lot of difference, advantages and disadvantages. Because when we used to learn, I'm talking about 40, 45 years ago, then there never used to be much technology. So never used to be allowed to record anything. And uh, especially with the Srimadhi Janeshni Santanam, the way she has taught me, everything is like a print in my mind. Because she never used to give the notation. Only if I have doubt, she'll tell. And uh, no recording. So anything is in the mind. Those days was anything in the mind, along with the notes they used to give, like my teachers in Delhi. But nowadays, I allow the students with so many activities they have to record and I upload this in YouTube also, barring the basic lessons. In fact, I have uploaded 25 Gitams so that they have got something to refer to, whether I am there or not, whatever they learned from me, I'm uploading in YouTube so that they never forget. So technology has improved, but at the same time, what I have learned in the Gurukulam manner, that is more authentic and more perfect. But nowadays, children and people, they don't have time with their jobs and other things. So can't blame them also. I know, yeah. Times have changed and uh, with the advancement in technology, I think you've utilized it to the fullest because as you said rightly, if they want to something to refer to, they can always have uh, YouTube as a reference and visit your channel and learn from there. And one other thing I found that is um, you have uploaded quite a few songs uh, on YouTube. 5,000 uploads it has crossed and I am teaching from, I have given 80 nursery rhymes also, tuned by myself. <laughs> Okay, that's right. For the newly born mothers and the babies, yeah. Ah, yeah. All those Odi Baliyadi Papa, Sainadi Amma, Sainadi, everything I have sung, you know, so that, you know, in my own tune, mm -hmm. because I sing only with the Tanpura, no accompaniments, but it, it is clear for them to learn. Many people are writing, so I'm happy. That's all. <laughs> Excellent. I think it mostly you have sung in English, in Tamil, Tamil nursery rhymes, right? I, I participated in my school program. And I was one of the female Pune and the male Pune was my friend. 
சோ பூனைக்கும் பூனைக்கும் கல்யாணமாம் பூலோகம் எல்லாம் கொண்டாட்டம் அஸ்ரி ரைம் சோ ஐ சாங் இட் இந்த டியூன் Hmm. so that one rhyme led me to many other rhymes you know i started like you know kuwa kuwa vaat maambalamma maambalamman goa maambal everything has sung actually <laughs> very nice so that's a a great uh, thing to refer to to learn from your channel hmm. another channel as raga sagaram on january 1st 2023 because i wanted to cover the jani ragas of all the mela kattas So I have finished, actually Maya Malagole has got almost 75 Jani Ragas. I covered only 47. I'll be covering more, you know. Like mm-hmm. once I finish with Maya Malagole, I want to first come to all the important Ragas like Kalyani Jani Ragas, Shankara Banam Jani Ragams, Karahara Priya Jani Ragams. Then come to the other Jani, Amela Kartas and those Jani Ragams. I don't know when I'll compete because it's Sangeeta Sagaram and it is an ocean. So I'm just doing whatever I can do every day, you know. So when you say covering Janya Ragas, you're covering Kritis in the Maya Malwa Gaulam Janya Ragas. Is that right? I am not singing the Kritis. I am singing the Arohanam Arohanam. Uh-huh. And under the classification of Ragas, uh, what does it come to? Like if you take Malakari, it is a Audava Shadava Raga. Five Swarams in the Arohanam, six Swarams in the Arohanam. So how the Nyasa Swaram, the Important Swaram, the Jeeva Swaram, and how the Raga Sancharam will be, I just sing and show. So it's just a video of three minutes, four minutes for basic learners to know about the Raga. Fantastic. Yeah, I think uh, this this will be very, very helpful for even uh, people who who have not learned Carnatic music. I think it's a great initiative and I I want to listen. I I was not aware of this. So I would be very eager to... You, know, links, you can have an idea, you know, like I'm covering now Maya Madagode, still not done for the past mm-hmm. two, three weeks, but mm-hmm. I try to cover. 47 ragas I completed. Mm-hmm. I think some more 20 ragas, 25 ragas are left. Jani ragam samaya malakali. Right. So how do you manage your uh, your music life and your family? Basically, I'm a workaholic. So I get up early in the morning, do all the housework, cooking and everything, then take Skype classes because my Skype classes are staggered in different time zones, you know. So, but, uh, so those classes I take and it is one-to-one teaching. I don't do group teaching. So mm-hmm. I have three, four classes in a day. In between, when I find time, it is on the spot singing Chitra. I don't mm-hmm. get time to sit and practice. Mm-hmm. So many Tevarams I've covered. Now, today also I sang two Tevarams, but I just tune it myself on the spot and sing. And mm-hmm. similarly, you know, Snokas, all I tune on the spot and sing bhajans. Barring the Vagayakas, which is original composition, and many compositions I have tuned myself in song. That's, that is... what i'm doing and i feel incomplete if i don't do any uploads every day so even if it's 12:30 in the night i sleep only around 12:30 if i get up at 6:30 in the morning but i try to do 3 4 uploads minimum every day besides my class and work right i mean that shows your passion right throat it also should you know like co- cooperate with you so i feel when the throat is all right clear and you're able to sing i should try to do how much possible you know i right. can Do you take any precautions to take care of your throat? I teach in five and a half, G-sharp, Shruti, to all the students. Even if they can't sing, I teach in G-sharp because if I keep on changing Shruti, the voice gets affected. True. So, <clears throat> when yeah. I sing, when I upload, I usually sing in five for Kritis, mm. five and a half for the Slokas. And if it is like Kamboji and Kedara Gaudai, it goes very high, any composition you take. That I sing in four and a half, but not below four and a half. Right. And at night, I see that I don't take any cold things. And mostly I don't, I avoid curd. I mean sour curd. Pulicha thairan and chapra mate. And I immediately catch the throat for me, you know, because I'm teaching the whole day. That's it. Correct. Correct. So I think it will have a, a big impact on the, on the voice, right? Um, yeah. There are certain foods you should not, you should try to avoid uh, if you really want to take care of your uh, singing voice. Grapes. Goa, pineapple, and to some extent, banana affects the throat. Oh, really? But if you, if you have it, immediately have warm water. Then it doesn't affect that much. Mm. So everything you can't avoid. So what I do is, if I feel like eating this food, say, have and immediately have warm water. Yeah. True. That helps. Makes sense, yeah. Tell me something about your academy. When did you establish uh, Shruti Music and Cultural Academy? Uh, that I 
started, established in 1988. And I was sending the students for exams and everything in Hyderabad <clears throat> because I felt that some focus should be there for them to do something. Then after 27 years of staying there, due to change of job of my husband, we had to shift to Hyderabad. So there I started sending to other teachers' exams. But nowadays I focus only on Ravi Kiran's exam. I find it to be the toughest and the most, you know, like challenge for the guru as well as the students. Because I've been sending for Ravi Kiran's Acharya Net music exams for the past, um, I think now, nine years. But I can send only selected students because the portion is very, very deep and uh, very tough also. Because if you take the first level, it has got up to Alankarams. But nothing is a student's choice. Whereas in the other exams where I send, the students are given 90% of the choice. Uh -huh. Here, barring even if you are youngest or anything, nobody's given any choice. It is only the examiner's choice and you should know it in Akaram. <clears throat> so, uh, that is the first level of Talankaram. Second level is 25 Gitam switch. Knowing the Arohanam and Avarohanam for 36 Ragas, randomly they ask Ganamurti, sing the Arohanam, Arohanam. So, you should be very thorough. Third level is 35 Geetams. So by the time you cross the fifth level, you become an established singer also in this exam because you can't give it every year. You have to be fully thorough about it. But it's a challenge for me and I keep sending students who I feel can go through that exam. But other students, I send it for the regular exams, you know, who won't be able to cope out. Mm. Because even compared to any university's exam, I find this exam to be a challenge and the toughest in my teaching experience. All oh, right. Okay. Mm, right. What is your vision uh, going forward, Chitraji? My vision is, you know, like going on learning, going on imparting. And till I am there, my prayer is that I should be able to sing till the end and impart till the end. That is my vision. And everybody should know how to enjoy music because I feel music is the biggest stress buster for anyone, if you like it. And it has got deep meditative, I mean, uh, this thing also because it de-stresses your mind. Yeah. But if you like only all these things will happen. If you like music, it is a de-stressor, stress buster. You enjoy it. And I, for me, the whole day how it goes, I don't know also because I'm always in music. Oh, man. Well, ragas are very, very therapeutic, right? In curing yeah, yeah, yeah. ailments. So. There are various courses also nowadays open for music, as music therapy. You know, it is a therapy only, actually. Yeah, true. How do you see the music scenario these days, the Carnatic music scenario? Are you happy with it or what more can be done? I am very happy with it. But the thing is, I feel... Uh, many youngsters are singing so nicely, so nicely, but too much of exposure to them, I feel in the long run, probably their quality should not come down. That is my little bit of my worry, you know. But I don't know, I may be wrong also, Chitra. Mm, yeah, it is important to give opportunity for many people to perform or show their showcase their talent. But I think you said it right, it is important to <laughs> preserve the classicism yeah. in the, the krithis or in the compositions which has been transcended for many centuries now. A plenty of talent is there. Every day you see a new talent in all these reality shows. <clears throat> but feel, you know, they should not burn out in the long run because of overexpression. Very true. I may be wrong also, Chitra, but I'm just telling my opinion. No, no, your opinion matters in our chats. I do respect your views. What do you think is the right amount of practice for any any person? It could be a young person or you know an adult, in order to reach this uh, the status of a performing artist. See, if you want to become a performing artist, it should be twenty four into seven. Focus only on that. Mm. You cannot have two professions and excel in both. Yeah, true. So. As a professional artist, a performing artist should give full life and dedication to that one day. Once they start becoming famous, every day is a challenge for them. Every concert is a challenge for them. Similarly, I am a teacher. So I am always thinking what to teach. 
So I have to go on improving myself. So there is no end for improving yourself. I think one life is not enough for in finance. Very true. Every initiative that we take is like a small drop in the ocean, right? In the ocean of music. Hmm. If you take one Vage Kara also, like if you take Jaga Pramod's composition, one, one lifetime, in fact, few lifetime is not enough. Few births are not enough to sing and show his compositions. So when I upload every day, I keep thinking, oh, my time is running, or oh, time is running, or oh, when am I going to sing all this? That is the kind of ocean music is actually. In. You explained it so well. You're right. It depends upon your passion to at least do justice to few of their compositions. That's all. Mm. Very true. Yeah. So I think we've covered almost every aspect. Is there anything that you would like to mention that I have not covered in this chat? Anything you would like to add on about your journey? My journey is, I think, you know, just continuing, continuing. Hope it continues like that. And I feel that everybody should develop a liking for music because I feel music is ultimately it is the supreme which we can feel when we sing and enjoy. Let it be any music. I'm not only talking about classical music. If you enjoy a film tune also, if you like that tune, that is also Sapta Swaras involved in that, you know, that is also a tune, that is also Sangeetam. So I think everybody should develop a liking for music and enjoy it. I love Listen to a lot of film music also. I'm a great fan of all these old melodies. So I keep listening. Whenever I'm cooking or doing something, some music is going behind and listen to all these things also. Fantastic. So that's, that's a wonderful ad advice. Your advice to your students and other young aspirants of music who would like to pursue this career of taking up music as a profession. If anybody wants to take music as a profession, they should be really dedicated and focused. And when they perform also, they should also think about every aspect. See, if you sing a composition and the lyrics are cut at the wrong place, but we sing the lyrics of the composer, so we should not do injustice to it. So we must try to see that everything is balanced properly if they have to take music as a profession to see that they give their best. Mm -hmm. Like in the room, Mahanu Bhavalu, but I listen to many people singing it as Entaro Mahanubhav. The entire meaning is changed. You understand, no? It is Maru Gelara, not Maru Kelara. Yeah. And if you take Muthu Swami Diksha Skriti, Mahadeva Sutam, Mahadeva Sun. But many people sing it as Mahadeva Sutam. These things also matter when you give a concert, actually. Mm. Small, small things like a drop makes a big ocean. These small, small things also goes a long way in giving a very good concert, actually. Yeah, and I think all these would be possible only if they have a good guru. Yeah, the guru should themselves know <clears throat> whether they are correct with the lyrics. They should verify and then teach. That's what I feel. Beautiful, yeah. But I'm able to do all this because this is my full-time profession. But nowadays, it is a dual profession for many. Even if it is dual profession, doesn't matter. I feel when they are gurus, they should see that they are doing it properly. That's a very, very valuable piece of advice to all the young people. So now we move on to the next segment in the chat, which is the lighter side of you. So how okay. would you describe yourself in three words? I am a positive person. I never get disheartened by anything. I always pick up myself and I'm back to my work again. Can you share one of your memorable concert experience? For me, you know, like <clears throat> Neil Nori Shishnamurti Garu is the ultimate guru in the sense. I feel the kind of music he has composed for Anamachari and Badrasa Ramadas Kritis. Nobody can compose. A sense of full classism is there in all his compositions. Mm. And I still remember remember my last meeting, we were at the airport and he was also there. Uh, I think he had come for some treatment to Hyderabad, at the Hyderabad airport. So I went and introduced myself. He couldn't remember me, though in spite of many workshops I have attended. Then I said, you know, like uh, how I remember his Amaya Rama and some of this Alamelu Manga, various, uh, you know, like composed in Bhairavi. Many people say it's Italian, but he has composed it in Bhairavi. And um, 
is uh, Adi Sudari Mohana Rupam in Mohanam. The essence of Mohanam fully comes in that Kriti, like I told him. But he was not able to remember everything. And within a week, he passed away. I felt very sad about it. And I, to this day, I keep singing and teaching his Kakarla Vamsa Sambhuta that it has been tuned by Nenuri Rishnamurti Garu in Shuruti. So when they attended his workshop, he asked, does anybody remember this Mangalam? Nobody could remember in the audience, but I remembered and he sang and he was very happy. You know, that was my memorable moment. Actually. You are really blessed, I must say. What is your favorite cuisine or food? I love to cook. So I cook everything. Chinese, continental, Punjabi, Gujarati, Andhra. So my favorite cuisine is actually I like Andhra food. I like the pickles and the powders. And I like, I'm a Palgat ayer. So I like Kerala food also. So I cook everything you know so i like mexican food i like nachos what's your favorite holiday destination i always like to go to our kuladevam you know swami malai tanjavur so whenever we go to tanjavur i go to tiruviyar and just peacefully sing one or two kritis in front of tyaga brahmam and like to visit temples that is my favorite destination actually are you a coffee or a tea person i drink only tea <laughs> But the irony is, today I uploaded on a coffee mantra for coffee lovers. Oh, really? <laughs> In YouTube today, because I came across that mantra and I found it to be nice. I thought it's good for coffee lovers, but I never drink coffee. I drink only tea. And anybody offers any amount of tea, I drink because I like tea, but without sugar. Are you an early riser or a late riser? Since I sleep very late, I get up only around 7, 7.30. Can't get up before that because I don't sleep in. Once I get up, I don't sleep in the afternoon. All right. Okay. My best wishes to you for continuing this legacy and uh, you know to upload as many videos on YouTube and help other young or even older aspirants of music to learn and keep that as a reference point for their learning, musical learning. Thank you very much, Chitra, for giving this nice opportunity. Really enjoy talking to you. It's a pleasure. Take care. Thank Namaskar. you. Thank you. Namaskar.